Hey family, we are so excited because service starts in just three minutes. I am so excited and thrilled that you decided to join us for service today. Listen, your mind is going to be blown when you see the worship that we have prepared and the word that is coming. So listen, because I don't want you to be the only one enjoying this, I need you to share, tag your friends, tag your family, put it in your group threads, all of that jazz. You take care of that. We coming back. Listen, family, we are two minutes away from a life-changing worship experience. Do me a favor, I already know you shared, but hit the at button and tag at least five people. Now, I want you to think about all the people that you've been praying for, all the people that need to be saved, your coworkers, your family, your cousins. Tag them in the comments. I'm, now listen, I'm gonna be watching and I wanna see you tag your friends. We're getting ready to go higher, and I'm excited to worship with you. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, but by now you already know that. I trust that you have shared, you have tagged someone, and I need you now. We are 60 seconds away from a life-changing moment. I need you to prepare your heart. Grab a notebook and a, a tablet, a pen, paper, something, so that you can get a hold of this word that's getting ready to come. Get your shouting shoes on. Move your little coffee table out of the way. Do whatever you have to do to enjoy what God is about to give you. We're going into the service in just a moment, but I want to challenge you even now. You already know that God is getting ready to speak to you. You already know that you're getting ready to be blessed. Can I invite you to go ahead and put a seed in good ground? You might be laid out when we get to the offering and giving opportunity in the service. So go ahead and follow the instructions on the screen. Get ready to be blessed and we'll see you in the sanctuary in just a few more moments. the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Faith Covenant Church. We're so happy that you have joined in with us for our Wednesday night Bible class taught by Bishop Mark A. Moore Sr. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now I need you to share, share this great experience. Tag your brother, tag your sister, tag a neighbor. Let them know that we are on. Share this great experience because God have a word prepared just for you. Let us go into our praise and worship. I want you to put your hands together. Now, if you're driving, don't put your hands together. But if you're in your home, put your hands together.
some praise in your home, in your bedroom, in your family room. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's mid midweek manna, midweek manna, and God has a word for somebody. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus, bless the name of Jesus. So, hallelujah, I just feel a praise in my soul. Hallelujah, I hear the song say, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his soul. holy, oh bless his holy name. Say, I will bless the Lord. I will. Come on, tag somebody. Share. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his
Bless the name of the Lord. Welcome. We certainly thank First Lady for leading us into the presence of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. She, she, she's got it. We thank God for that great, uh, I'm just going to say television personality. Amen. Beautiful smile and beautiful voice. And uh, we thank God for what she brings to uh, this great ministry. Uh, again, if you haven't shared, do that right now. Invite someone. Hallelujah. And let's not forget the benefits of the Lord. Thank God for our wonderful staff and team of musicians. Amen. Amen. Elder Tommy Cody. Amen. Uh, I started to say Minister Jonathan Jackson, but we're calling yes, him Brother yes, Jonathan yes. Jackson. Amen. Amen. Deacon George Moore. Oh, yes. Amen. God. We're just delighted to be here with you. Yes. And let's get into the Word. Let's go to St. John's Gospel, the 15th chapter. St. John 15. Come on, family, at home. Dust off that family Bible. <laughs> Gather the little ones around. Gather the family. Turn off every distraction. It's Word time. It's time to grow in our walk with God. Hallelujah. In fact, let's just pray now for the blessing of the Lord on our time together. Father, in the great name of Jesus, we thank you because you are altogether lovely. We thank you that the more that we know you, the more we love you. For to know you is to love you. To love you is to serve you. We thank you, Lord, that you are growing us, that you are grooming us. We thank you, Lord, that you are nurturing us in our walk with you. I thank you that this is our year for great things. We believe you now, Lord, that your word is bringing light. Then we're going to walk in that light now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. John 15 and verse number 10, we're continuing with our teaching on discipleship, the second discipline of the disciple, which is living in the word. And let's look at the 15th chapter of John in verse number 10, where it says, and this is Jesus talking. He said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Uh, I want you to make this confession with me at the outset. Make this confession with me. Say this. Say, I am built to last because I'm built upon the rock of God's truth and I'm committed to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, fulfilling my master's mission to make disciples of others. We are disciple-making disciples. We're disciple-making disciples. And that means I'm a disciple that makes other disciples. That's my mission in life. That's your mission in life if you choose to accept it. Your, your purpose, the reason why the Lord has saved you, is not to see how many millions of dollars you can make. That's not a sin. There's nothing wrong with that. The blessing of the Lord maketh the rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. But that is not our purpose on earth. Our purpose is to fulfill the mission of Christ to finish his work in the earth. Now, uh, we've been talking about uh, the disciplines of discipleship. The first one was abiding in Christ by spending quality time with him daily. Remember this, that love is spelled many times T-I-M-E. T-I-M-E. If you love your family you're going to spend T-I-M-E with them. If you love your significant other, you're going to spend T-I-M-E with them. If you love the Lord, you're going to give him T-I-M-E, time. And so we talked about three key principles, preparation, preparing a time, preparing a place, preparing the atmosphere, preparing your resources, preparing your heart. We talked about having a pattern that we don't just haphazardly come to the Lord, just like you don't haphazardly go to the gym to work out. If you're going to get uh, the benefit, you got to work out uh, with a plan, a pattern, a system. Uh, and so we talked about the pattern of the word and worship and prayer. Then we talked thirdly about persistence, that you've got to come to a place of consistency in your walk uh, and spending time with the Lord. Anything that you're going to become good at, you've got to be persistent with it. 
Secondly, and this is last week, we talked about living in the word and that it involves growing in the word by making the word a priority in our life. Can I ask you the question? You can answer in the comments, but let me just ask you this question. Is the word of God a true priority in your daily life? And there are so many people that, that claim to have been Christians or claim to have been saved many for years and have never read through the Bible. <laughs> Think about that. Never have read through the Bible. You have the ability to read. You read the newspaper. You read uh, online news. You read books. But many have never read the Bible from cover to cover. And yet we say that it is the Word of God. So is it a priority? Then we talked about having a daily intake of the Word of God. Saturation. If you want to master anything, you've got to saturate yourself in it. That's reading it and hearing it daily. That's listening to preaching and teaching daily. Well, if you listen to talk shows, you come on, you listen to music, why would I not also hear someone uh, talk about the Word of God? Saturation, studying the Word, studying topics, studying themes, studying books of the Bible. Then there's memorization, that you can develop a practice of memorizing the Bible, meditation, and then application. I want to take a, a closer look at a couple of these ways of interacting with the Word of God this evening. And, and the first one is I want to talk about memorization of the Word. Memorization of the word. Now, when I memorize the word, listen to this, I get the word in my head. I get it in my head, and hopefully I'm going to get it in my heart, but it starts with getting it in your head. Many times we want to start with the heart, and the reality is nothing gets in your heart that doesn't go through your head. <laughs> nothing gets in your heart that doesn't go through your head. So I got to start with getting it in my, in my head. You can count on the Holy Spirit. Listen to this. You can count on the Holy Spirit to bring back to you the scriptures that you've memorized uh, at the appropriate time. He'll do that. He'll do that. He'll bring them back to you. So let's talk about that. Let's go to John 14, since we're here in the book of John. Let's go to John, the 14th chapter, and uh, verse number uh, 26, where it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so when I get it in my head, I can count on him to bring it back when I need it. So do you have a scripture memorization uh, pattern? Do you have a scripture memorization plan? How do we memorize the Word of God? Well, I'm going to give you some uh, principles. I'm going to give you six keys right quick. Number one, if you're going to memorize the Scripture, you want to select a verse of Scripture that speaks to you. You want to select a verse of Scripture that speaks to you and underline or highlight it in your Bible. Underline or highlight it in your Bible. So I'm starting in my Bible reading uh, many times it's a good habit, a good practice to uh, have certain things you read regularly. I, I think it's a good practice to read a chapter of Proverbs daily. If you read a chapter of Proverbs every day, it's 31 chapters, you'll go through the book of wisdom 12 times a year. I think something's going to have to, uh, uh, what, what is it, rub off on you. After 12 times of going through Proverbs, you're going to have to be a little wiser, a little smarter. But, but let's say I'm reading Proverbs and, and a, a verse stands out. I'm trying to think of the verse that I taught my sons back when they were little about I, I'm one of my sons here. Proverbs 22 and what? 16. And, and what does that say? Say it out loud. <laughs> Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from. And that's Proverbs what? Somehow, that one verse of Scripture jumped out at them. That one verse jumped out at them. Uh, they, they caught that verse. And when they caught that verse, they have never forgotten it. I could ask either one of them. Now, my daughter doesn't have the same testimony because she didn't have the same encounters. She didn't have the same encounters that her brothers had. But they remember the Scripture, Proverbs 22 and 16. I've forgotten it. But that Scripture apparently meant something to them. Foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. 
but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. As I'm reading through, this scripture stands out. I may highlight it. I may underline it. It's not enough just to highlight and undermine it, but underline it. But here's another thing. You want to read it and understand it in different translations. Read it and understand it in different translations. Now listen, 19, uh, 2019 rather, 2020, those may have been the years that you were just reading one translation, but we're in 2021. Every believer who's a disciple should have more than one translation of the scriptures uh, because you get different perspectives. Uh, I know some folks say, well, now that's such and such is not a good translation. If it's of the scriptures, it, it at least has something good. And so uh, you, you want to study. I don't want to get into uh, a, a, a uh, uh, what do I say, a recommendation necessarily of what are the best translations altogether in this lesson. But there are a number of reputable translations. Some have some problems, but uh, all of them have something to offer. Uh, I read uh, for church from the King James Bible. I, I love it because of its poeticness. I love it because of its familiarity. I tend to memorize the Bible in King James, but I read it many times in the New International Version. Uh, the New American Standard uh, Bible is, is considered to be the best word-for-word -word translation. Uh, the, the Living Bible, the New Living Bible, uh, the New King James Version, uh, there are a number of fairly reputable translations. Uh, some people love the Message Bible. I'm not necessarily a fan of it because I don't think it's a translation as much as it is a paraphrase. And many times it's a very loose paraphrase that I can't find how it connects. But a lot of people love it. It gives them uh, wisdom. I'm just saying as long as, as that's not your only translation you're relying on, having multiple translations as you're putting them side by side, you're going to soon gather what the meaning of a verse is. So you want to read a verse, that verse that stands out to you in multiple translations. Get the context. Understand it. And then you, you may want to develop memory aids. And I had meant to bring in a sample of one of the memory aids I had. Uh, I had actually flashcards. Uh, I'm just going to use this as a, a blank example. But I had flashcards. And on one side of the card, I would write the text uh, uh, or the, uh, where the scripture is found. Proverbs 22, 16. On this side. On this other side, I would write the text of the verse. And so then, using it like a flashcard, I could hold up the side that says Proverbs 22, 16, and then and quiz myself. You all remember flashcards in school? I could quiz myself as to, you know, do I have it memorized? Then I turn it over and look at it. And then uh, in fun, I may even have other folks to quiz me, hold up my flashcard to see if I'm memorizing it. This is not meaningless. This is not just going through a motion or an act, but when you make the discipline in your life of memorizing the word of God, the Lord, he says, I'll bring it back to your remembrance at the appropriate time. So that when you get in trouble, when you have a dark moment, I remember one of the darkest times in my life, the Lord brought back to me Psalm 27, one of my favorite psalms. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Hallelujah to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. Hallelujah. He shall set me up on a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round up. And it goes on and on. But that, that, those first number of verses of that psalm have stuck with me and sustained me when I would have lost my mind, when I, when I could have had a breakdown, because he'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. Every preacher, and I know I got some preachers watching me, I got some preachers watching me, but every preacher ought to make it a habit of memorizing scripture and getting the verses correct. Uh, when, when, you're, when your preaching is full of actual word, not just words, there's an anointing on just the word of God. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Your prayer will cause you to be anointed. Your fasting will cause you to be anointed. Your consecration will cause you to be anointed. Your suffering will cause you to be anointed. But when you memorize this book and, be and begin to just speak the word, the word of God all by itself is anointed and will convict people. One of the things I love about my pastor, uh, Bishop James Nelson, who was sharing with us a couple of weeks ago uh, in, in our Bible study, one of the things I love about him is that he is word-filled. You can't counsel with him without him quoting the Bible. He's constantly quoting the Scripture, quoting the Scripture. And that gives authority to what he says. Because in myself, in, his, in himself, in yourself, we don't have the wisdom that we need, but the wisdom is in the Word. And so I urge you to make a, a discipline. Every believer, every disciple, every Christian needs to have a discipline of word memorization. And what you want to do, you make the, the flashcards and then you review them and revisit them. You may be developing a stack of flashcards. You may want to, uh, you don't have to, you don't, listen, you don't have to compete with anybody. You don't have to, you're, you're not in school where you say, well, I got to get 10 a week. No. If you can memorize three verses a week, think about that. Three verses a week times uh, 52 weeks, that's over 150 verses a year that you memorized. And, and, and if you keep revisiting those, they become a part of you. The next year, you may memorize another 150 more verses. After a while, you, you're what folk will call a walking Bible. Because the word of God is coming alive to you. The more that you read the word, the more you listen to the word. Here's another little thing. I listen to the, to the Bible uh, as my reading. I, I listen to the scripture. I love to read, but I find that I can get it assimilated in my spirit a little bit better when I listen to it. But I don't, I, I don't just listen to one translation. So I'll go through the Bible maybe a couple times a year. Uh, I'll listen to the King James and then the next time I go through, I'll listen to another translation. And the next time I go through, I go through I'll listen to another translation. And you become so familiar with passages and with books and with verses that you begin to remember in the other translation from the King James. Oh, yeah, this is, I remember this in the King James, and here's how it's said there. So you want to saturate. Everybody say saturate. Saturate yourself with the Word of God and then quiz yourself and have others quiz you. Now, Let's talk for a minute about the benefits of scripture memorization. Did you know that there are benefits? I, I just touched on a couple of them, but there are actual benefits of scriptural memorization. Let's go to Matthew's gospel, the fourth chapter. Come on, everybody go to Matthew 4. If you got to get it on your phone, if you got to get it on your tablet, if you got your Bible, go to Matthew's gospel, the fourth chapter. And I want you to see the benefit of knowing the scripture in your head. The benefit of knowing the scripture. Matthew 4. And uh, look at this. Verse number 1 through 11. Verse number 1 through 11. And uh, notice here the tempter. Verse number 3. I'll just start there because I don't have time to go through all these. In, in verse 1, it says, Jesus was led up of the Spirit led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tested or tempted of the devil. He had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he was afterward hungry. Uh, then verse number four, uh, the, the devil has come to him and says, you know, if you're the son of God, in verse three, command these stones to be made bread. In verse number four, uh, Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. He actually fought the devil with the scripture. He fought the enemy with the word. The next temptation, uh, the enemy takes him up on the high place and says, you know, if, if you're really the son of God, just jump. Just jump. I, I remember talking to someone not long ago that said, you know, that one of the things they have a fear of heights is that the, the, something says in their mind, you ought to just jump. I said, you're not abnormal. You're not crazy. The devil even did that to Jesus. All of us can feel giddy at some point, and, and there's that temptation. But the enemy says to him, jump. He says, you know, uh, now, now the devil's trying to up his word game. He says, you know, he shall give his angels charge over thee. It is written. The devil says it's written. 
it's a bad thing if the devil knows more scripture than you trying to know. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I, I got to tell somebody this. Some of these devils you've been messing with know more Bible than you know. <laughs> and they're misquoting it. They're quoting it out of context because you won't take the time, my dear brother, my dear sister, <laughs> to actually read and study the word. You let the devil come and quote the scripture all out of context, and sometimes they're twisting it. So the devil's quoting. He says, the, the angels will bear you up lest at any time you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus in verse 7 again replies, it is written. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You're not supposed to play games with God's protection. That's why, you know, the scripture says, well, if I take up any deadly thing, it won't hurt me. I'm not supposed to go around, Brother Jonathan, drinking Drano. Come on, because if I take up any deadly thing, it won't hurt me. I'm not supposed to be out there handling snakes. I know they got some churches and they're Pentecost, even some so-called apostolic churches up in the hills of Kentucky and West Virginia where they get to having church and dancing and speaking in tongues. And then all of a sudden somebody pulls a crate out from under the front bench and there's a bunch of rattlesnakes. Brothers and sisters, if I go to that kind of church, I might make a door where there wasn't meant to be a door. Because, you know, you're not supposed to tempt the Lord uh, by 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 trying him like that on something that's not necessary uh you know well well jesus walked on water i'm gonna go out on lake lanier and test my faith walking no unless he bids you to come don't come because <laughs> you might end up going to see him come on here somebody so so jesus responds it is written the third temptation uh, the enemy says on a high mountain he says i'm gonna show you the kings kingdoms of the world and their glory and he says, I'll give all of you, all of these things to you if you'll just bow down and worship me. He makes him an offer that would, to us would be so tempting. Hallelujah. Some of us would rationalize that. We would say, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, if, 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 I, if I have the rule, then I could turn everybody to the Lord. No, you've already, whenever you start bargaining with the devil, you are already lost. And so Jesus doesn't bargain with him. Jesus says, Get the hints, Satan. Get, get away from me. Get behind me. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Every time the temptation comes, he answers it with the word. So here's a benefit of scripture memorization. It will help you to have victory over sin. I want to say this to all my young people that are struggling to live this life. One of the keys to living a sanctified Holy life is you got to hide the word of God in your heart. You got to hide the word of God in your heart. Psalm 119. I think we read it last week, but it, it's, so, it's so nice. We'll read it twice. Psalm 119, and I think I want verse number 9. Verse number 9. Come on, turn, it, turn with me there. Turn with me there. Psalm 119, verse number 9. And the question is asked, wherewithal or how shall a young man Cleanse his way. Bishop, I'm struggling with my flesh. Bishop, I, I, I just keep having a problem. You know, she's my kryptonite. Will Superman put your cape on and fly the other direction? You know, uh, you know Bishop, you know, every, every which way I turn, there's temptation. Uh, they know my weakness. And, and I'm going to tell you, the, in, the enemy has some folk anointed to bring you down. They're not anointed by God, but they're anointed by the devil. The devil knows what you like. He's not going to tempt you with something you don't like. He's going to bring you just what you like. And so you got to have enough wisdom. Here's a scripture to memorize. We're not ignorant concerning the devices of our adversary. We're not ignorant. We know which way he's coming. But notice this. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? How do I live this life? The answer comes back here in verse 9. By taking heed. There too. I begin to examine my way according to the word. So the more word I'm getting, the stronger I'm becoming. Look at verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. It says there, By word have I hid in my heart that I might not, what? Sin against thee. Listen. 
Listen, listen. Instead of sitting around crying about, oh, I'm just so weak. Oh, I just have problems. Oh, like you're the only one being tempted. Like you're the only one that has flesh. Like you're the only one whose flesh burns sometimes. Come on. You're the only one that likes women. You're the only woman that likes men. The devil is a liar. Come on, somebody. You can walk in victory. You don't have to be defeated. If you got the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, you can live without reproach. Hallelujah. But it's going to take getting the Word in your heart. It's going to take memorizing the Scripture. Here's another benefit of memorizing Scripture. It's in uh, 1 Peter, I think. 1 Peter, the third chapter. Come on, go there with me. 1 Peter chapter 3. And um, actually, I think I want... Uh, well, let me see. Let me be sure. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. And verse 15. Notice this now. Notice this now. Peter says, but sanctify the Lord. Sanctify, honor, set him apart, reverence him in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Always, always, always be ready to give an answer to anyone that asks you about this hope of salvation. You have a salvation that you're believing God is taking you to heaven. If the Lord would come back, you're ready to go with him, right? How many are ready if the Lord would come back? You don't have to raise your hand, just raise your heart. But, but if I'm, if I'm going to be ready, then I need to be also able to tell somebody what my salvation's about. And in order to do that, Deacon George, I've got to have memorized the word. I need to be able to take them in this book and show them the plan of salvation. I can't just say, wait a minute now, now uh, 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 we're we going to wait and I'm, I'm going to take you to church. I'm going to call my pastor. What if your pastor's not available? Come on, you got to know the word. What if the elder, Elder Moore, is not available? You got to know the word for yourself. And so it's so vitally important that you make it a practice to memorize the scripture. I can take them uh, to, to uh, Acts. This, that, that ought to be one of my first places. Acts chapter 2 and verse uh, 1 through 38. On the day of Pentecost, how the Holy Ghost was poured out. I ought to be able to take them to uh, Luke, the 24th chapter, where he says, I want you to go back and wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. I ought to be able to take them to Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, where Jesus says, now, when the Holy Ghost comes, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come, and you shall be witness unto, uh, witnesses unto me, both in, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. I ought, to be, I ought to be able to take them and quote to them from the 19th chapter of Acts, where Paul met the disciples of, of uh, John coming up the Ephesus road. And he says, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we've not so much as even heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And, and then he, he says to them, how then were you baptized? I ought to be able to take them to the, to the 10th chapter and the 11th chapter where Peter at Cornelius' house ministers the plan of salvation. I ought to be able to take them to the 22nd chapter of Acts where, where uh, uh, Paul gives his testimony of how when he was saved, uh, he was baptized. And folks say, well, baptism doesn't make a difference. But, but Ananias, when he baptizes him, says to him, rise now and be baptized calling upon the name of the Lord, washing away your sins, or, or washing away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. So if baptism is not for remission of sin, why would Ananias have said that your sins are washed away calling on the name of the Lord in baptism? If the name is not important, why would he have done it in the name of the Lord? So I need to know some scriptures to know how to explain what I believe. Every saint ought to know John 3.16. Come on. Every saint ought to know where it talks about except a man is born again of water and spirit. Is that John 3 and 5, I think? Well, he cannot see the kingdom, cannot enter, cannot see it. I'm telling you, you've got to get enough scripture in you to be able to give an answer for what you believe. Because the world is bombarding us, telling us all their belief system. The world is bombarding you to tell you that it doesn't make any difference. And you need an answer. 
You need to be the quote in Corinthians where Paul says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Glory to God. So, so one of the benefits of scripture memorization, uh, Elder Moore, is not just victory over sin, but it's also that I'm equipped to win souls to Jesus Christ. As I learn the scripture, it makes me a better soul winner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let's go just a little bit deeper. Let's go a little, bit, a little bit deeper. Let's talk about another thing that's so important. We talked about memorizing the word, but how about meditating the word? Meditating the word. How many of us have ever really talked in church in depth about meditation? Wait, uh, Bishop, I, I got a scripture for that, Bishop. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my... That's wonderful, but what does it really mean to meditate on the word? What does it really mean to meditate? Now, I said memorizing, Brother George, gets the word in your head. But meditating the word, Elder Tommy, gets the word in your heart. I've got to get the word from my head to my heart. Someone preached a sermon. I never heard the sermon, but I heard of it. It's one of the most famous sermons I never heard. But someone preached a sermon entitled Missing Heaven by 18 Inches. Missing Heaven by 18 Inches. You know what 18 inches is? It's the distance from your head to your heart. And there's a whole lot of folk got head knowledge. They got the word in their head, but they're going to miss heaven by that distance from the head to the heart because they never got the word all the way in their heart. And what meditation does, if you want a life of victory, if you, how many want a life of the supernatural? Come on, how many want a life, go hope, I feel the Holy Ghost, of miracles, of signs, and of wonders? How many want a life that people, when they get around you, they want the God that you serve? They see something in you, and it makes them want to be more spiritual. If you want that kind of life, you've got to begin to meditate the Word of God. Now, what is meditation? We, we think of meditation, sadly, because of the New Age. Most folk, when they think of meditation, think you're sitting, uh, you know, uh, what they, they used to call crisscross applesauce, Indian style, with your, your, your legs crossed and your, your palms up on your knees, and you say, mmm, um, Ah, ba, ba, ba. That's my meditation word. Ba, ba, ba. You got some word that you're meditating in from Hindu or something, Hindi in another language, and you're repeating that. And, and the reality is <laughs> that's not too far from the truth. You don't have to sit crisscross applesauce. You don't have to have your palms up. But meditating, the, the part that is accurate is meditating is a muttering the same thing over and over again. George, the idea behind meditation is like a, ch a cow. Uh, most of us weren't raised on the farm. I, I, I didn't have any cows growing up. Uh, but I do know this about cows, that cows, they say, I think have seven stomachs. And so the way they digest their food is they chew it, swallow it, and then bring it up again and chew it some more. <laughs> swallow it. I guess it goes down to stomach number two. Bring it up again. <laughs> Chew it some more. And they call that chewing their cud. That's how a brown cow eats green grass and makes white milk. Because <laughs> he's chewed it and digested it about seven times until it's, all the green is gone. Uh, the reality is he is getting more nutrient out of it every time he brings it up and chews it some more. And so meditation is kind of like that same idea. I keep, I'm not shy. I keep bringing it up and I keep on. I keep on chewing it and digesting it. I'm getting more nutrients. So when I meditate the word, I mutter it over and over again. So, uh, for example, uh, I don't want to use Proverbs 22 and 16, so give me another example. How about Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Maybe that's the verse I'm meditating today. So throughout the day, Lord, I just thank you that you are my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I, it's not loud. It's not for anybody else to hear, but I keep on. What's happening is, it's getting in my spirit. You want signs and wonders in your life? How about uh, these signs shall follow them that believe? In my name, they'll cast out devils. 
They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I can meditate that. Father, I thank you that in your name I'm laying hands on the sick and, and they're being healed. What I'm doing, I'm meditating. I'm just repeating it throughout the day in my spirit. You know, I've heard some faith preachers who have who've shared that the, the avenue, the, the gateway that got them into signs and wonders and miracles. I remember hearing the story of one who would for eight hours a day in his garage just repeat over and over again, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Now that sounds crazy, but he got the result because once that thing gets in your spirit, nobody can take it from you. The problem we have in praying for folk and seeing the results many times is we have the principle of it, but it's not in our heart to really believe it. With the heart, we believe in the salvation. But you've got to meditate that thing until it gets in your heart. You've got to meditate that thing, the victory that you want to walk in. Come on, somebody. You've got to meditate that thing until your life has changed. Look at this. Look, look, at, look at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, and my time is almost gone. Glory to God. Joshua chapter 1. Bear with me, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm using the old-fashioned Bible. This one never crashes, but sometimes it just takes a minute to get to the page. Joshua 1 and verse number 8. Now listen to what the Lord says. Listen to what the Lord says. Y'all have it? Joshua 1 and 8. He says, uh, the Lord is talking to Joshua. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of where? Out of your mouth. It shall not depart out of your mouth. It shall not depart where? Out of your let, 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 let's, let's go back to, to Genesis. Hold your place here. Go to Genesis 1. Because what we don't realize, many of us, and I just feel the Holy Ghost kind of lead me here. because it's, uh, it's, it's not in my notes. But I just feel to go here. Genesis 1, because I want you to get this. We live in a voice-activated kingdom. We live in a voice-activated kingdom. Uh, notice this. Um, in, in chapter 1 and verse number 2, and God what? Said. Y'all didn't even go with me. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Mm -hmm. uh, verse number, uh, uh, where I want uh, verse number six, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of, of, of the waters. And it, it came, divide the waters from the waters. Uh, verse number nine, and God said, let the waters of the heavens be gathered together. Everything God wanted to create, God said. Verse 11, and God said. Come on. Verse number 14, and God said said. Come on, verse number 20. And God said, whatever you want in life, in the world, in your career, in your finances, in your relationships, if you'll learn how to do what God did and say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Uh, that's why the Lord says, going back to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8, notice this. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Why? Because what you say is what you'll have. What you say is what you'll have. What you say is what you'll have. This book of the law. So if you want Bible results, you got to say Bible words. Brother Jonathan, one of the most powerful ways to pray is to pray the scripture. When you begin to pray God's word back at him, that's when you know I'm going to get a result because I'm standing on the word of God. I'm saying what God says. And because I'm saying what I know God said, I'm going to get the result. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt what? Meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do let me finish that verse. To do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Now I want, you, I want you to look at that verse. Joshua 1 and 8. 
I want you to look at it. I want you to examine it because I'm going to ask you a question. But let me talk about this meditation. I want you to meditate on it. I want you to mutter it. I want you to say it over and over again. Say the book. Say the word. Saturate. 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 Find the word that, that speaks to your situation. Find the, with his stripes, I'm healed. You have an, a malady in your body, with his stripes, I'm healed. Right. I'm surrounded with favor as a shield. You could go through the day meditating. Lord, I thank you that I'm surrounded with favor as a shield. Everywhere I go, favor surrounding me. Hallelujah. When you become favor consciousness, favor finds you. When you become healing conscious, healing finds you. When you become wealth conscious, wealth finds you. Come on. When you, when you become anointing and miracle conscious, anointing and miracles find you. So meditate on it day and night. Now here's my question. You all are ready for the question? In Joshua 1 and 8, what is the expected result of meditating on the Word of God? Joshua 1 and 8, what is the expected result? Uh, yeah, there it is. Uh, you, you got part of it, Elder Moore. He says good success, but that's only part of it. He says, thou shalt make thy way what? prosperous is there anybody watching me right now is there anybody in the room right now that wants to make your way prosperous is there anybody that wants prosperity to be your portion glory to God the blessing of the Lord does what maketh rich I meditate that scripture and he has no saw with it I meditate that. I go through the day. I say that when I'm praying at least 10 times. Lord, I thank you. The blessing of the Lord on my life is making rich. You know what the blessing of the Lord is? It is the empowerment to prosper and succeed. I want everybody watching me right now. I want everybody in the room. Say this to me. Say, I am empowered to prosper and succeed. So when, when, when I begin to meditate. Come on, musicians. My time is up. But when I begin to meditate on the word, glory to God. Then what happens is the result I can expect, according to Joshua 1 and 8, is prosperity and good success. What do you think good success means? I know some of you, I can hear you in my spirit. Good success. Good success means good success. Well, uh, let's go a little deeper than that. I think what good success means here is that, uh, you know, you can have success, but it can be a heartache. You can have success after the world. <laughs> but it can be, make you want to pull your hair out. You can have success, but have divorce. You can have success, but your children go astray. He says you will have what kind of success? Good success. You don't have to lose your mind with this success because I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, saints and friends. I'm so glad that you joined me. I want to encourage you to memorize the word, get it in your head, and meditate the word and get it in your heart. Has this helped anybody? If it's helped you, put it in the comments. If it's helped you, wherever you are right now, just say hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm excited for you this year because this is a year that God is building something in you to last. This is a year that you're not going backwards but only forwards. How many of you will help me to grow this Bible study by telling somebody else to join you next week? Tell them to catch the encore on Friday at 11 o'clock on YLC TV and Young Leaders Conference uh, Facebook page. Tell them to join you on, on Thursday night at 9 p.m. on YLC TV and Young Leaders Facebook page. And on Sunday at 2 uh, on the Faith Covenant Church page and on Bishop Mark Moore TV on, uh, on YouTube. Listen, we're, 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 we're so committed to seeing your life become all that God said it can be. I'm so committed to seeing you prosper and have good success. I'm so thankful that you have allowed me to have some of your time. And, and I want to tell you right now, there's someone watching. You're on the beginning of the journey. And oh my, my God, God wants to do something so amazing in your life. God wants to do something unbelievable in your life. All you got to do, all you got to do is make up in your mind, I want to live for him who died for me. There's a number right now on the screen. I want you to call that number. There's someone waiting. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love what the musicians are playing. Come on. Hey, Babasha. <laughs> 
Thank you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Sing it, Elder. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, call the number. Follow you forward. Hey, hey, hey. You call the number. All things to yes, you. Call the number. Call the number. Call the number. And I will Thank you, Jesus. follow you forward. Say it again. Say it again. Oh, say it again. All things new, yes, you make all, all things, things new, and I will follow you forward. Yeah, you make all things new, yes, you make all things new. I want to pray for you. I know that some of you are calling right now. I'm believing that God is healing, delivering, strengthening. This is not just a normal Bible study time. This is a time of transformation. Your family is going to be transformed this year. Your finances are going to be transformed this year. Your physical body is going to be transformed this year. He's going to do it for you. If this has been a blessing to you tonight, I want you right now to get ready to sow. Join me in sowing at least $25. Listen, you're growing. I know you are. You're developing. I know you are. Every member of our church, let's honor the Lord with our tithe and with our offering. But those that are watching, if you've been blessed, I need at least 15 that will say I'm sowing an intentional seed, an intentional seed, an intentional seed of $25. Bishop, I got your back. I'm sowing with you. I'm sowing with you. Father, speak to hearts now. Speak to hearts now. I know you're doing it. I know you're doing it. God, I thank you that there are people that are listening who will not eat from the table and walk away and leave the table without putting something on it. I thank you that there are people of integrity watching who will say, I may not have a whole lot, but I can sow something. And I know that my seed is going to grow and meet my need. In the name of Jesus. Come on, hold, your, hold your, your phone or your tablet or whatever you're going to sow with. Hold it up and make your declaration. This is my seed. This is my seed. I sow it willingly and joyfully. Therefore, I boldly confess the windows of heaven are open above me. I am wealthy. I am prosperous. I'll never be broke again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Beloved, until I see you again. I can't wait. It won't be long. I'm believing God. Vaccination. I believe in God for healing in our land. And I can't wait to see you if you're in Atlanta here at this church. You make all things new. Yeah.